Hey guys, another Demon Slot Reviews here, and this is another Skyrich set review. And this is of the Continental Sports Car set. And as you can see, it is the two start cars. Uh, the one on the left is the GT uh, race car, and the other one on the right is the GT prototype. So, in my opinion, it looks more like the LMP sports prototypes, like the Audi R18 and the Porsche and um, the Toyota. So it kind of looks more like an LMP car to me than it does an actual GT car, but on the box it says GT prototype. So as you can tell, it's quite a small set, and its retail price is only fifty pounds or forty nine ninety nine. So be careful where you go because uh, there are some places that are charging more than forty nine ninety nine for these sets. But as you can see, it's a pretty basic set as well. Uh, you've got a figure of eight at the bottom there, but there are four alternate tracks to do and I won't do that one because I've seen that one quite a few times So I might do one of the alternate tracks that's on the back Right, let's get inside the box and see what's in there All right, so first of all, it's slightly different from some of the other boxes that Skeletrix do It's like the old star, car, uh, the star set boxes where it's all held by tape and it's just like a box within a lid so, just get a small knife, just slice it all open. If you're under 18, get an adult to help you cut open the box because you know, you don't want to promote someone using a knife or cutting implement to hurt themselves. So, I'm just saying that to protect myself, really. So, if you're young, get an adult to help you cut open the box. It'll only take two seconds. Even a small kitchen knife would do it, or you know, the knife that you use at your plate or whatever. So, on the, also on the box, just for the last thing I'd just mention, is it's got all the quick cooks, uh, QR codes on it, and a whole bunch of advertisements for Skeletrics, Facebook page, YouTube page, and Twitter account. So, all their different forms of social media that they do. And if we just open it up, there it is, in all of its glory. The set. Now, the one thing that I do find slightly annoying about the set is I didn't have a handle on it. I thought it might have done, but obviously not when I bought it from the shop. And I live in Plymouth, so I live about half an hour walk, normal half an hour walk from the town centre. And I had to lug it home for half an hour, and it took me about 45 minutes to actually get it home because of the weight of the thing. And if it had a handle on it, it would have been better, but it was raining, so I had two bags and I had to sort of, you know, wrap it all up so it didn't get wet. So a lot of struggle to get this set home to you <laughs> for a review. There are the two cars. They look pretty nice on their own, but obviously you'll want to put the stickers on them. So I'll do that uh, before the actual track test. And again, they've got rid of the polystyrene and replaced it with all this cardboard. And... It is slightly annoying because it does make it harder to put everything away. I used to like it with the polystyrene because it was just pretty simple to put it all away. And also, interestingly enough, it's not Star Trek. It is Sport Trek. So it looks like to me that Star Trek is out completely, apart from in the few sets that it's in. And just as well, because it wasn't actually fully compatible with some of the other stuff that they did anyway. The curves from start were slightly longer or like wider. I can't, I can't explain it. But they, if you, they're meant to be radius two corners, which are the ones that you get in every single sketch, except which is the standard ones, like that. And it was meant to be exactly the same as that, as in a full ninety degree bend. But it wasn't. It was a little bit longer. So it made it quite difficult to adapt to making tracks. But also with the start sets, you get, or well, these new sets, and also with Arc 1, you get this brand new piece of skeletal track, which is a full 90 degree bend with no sort of middle bit in there whatsoever, which is kind of nice because that means you've got less bits to take apart when you put it together and when you take it apart. Yeah, bridge supports as well, because there's a few tracks that need them in it. And this one I'm quite interested to see. And that's just your power supply, so nothing too exciting. 
But this is a new start. It's a Skeletric Start Power Base, but on Sport Track. That's pretty cool. So this isn't compatible, I would say, directly with Skeletric Start Sets. So if you've got any other Start Sets, don't panic. You can buy conversion pieces. But this is pretty cool, actually. I'm quite impressed that it's all start. It's all Sport Track, not Start Track. And you've also got this brand new lap counter, which has done in, that's been in other sets, but it's on Sport Track as well. So these pieces of track here that you're seeing are one and a half straights long, or sports track. So they're quite a long bit of track as well. And just in there are your two controllers with the adjustment. So that's that's on its lowest setting, easy to pull. But when you adjust it, it makes it harder to pull. So your kids, which or young child or someone who isn't got any trigger sense whatsoever doesn't just ram it off the road every single time you use it. And a slightly new connection piece, it's been in the last couple of sets, I think uh, as early as the Fast and Furious 6 set we got some of these controllers with that kind of connection on them. And there's also this one with the same connection on the bottom. Skeletrix had changed it so their power input, which is used to be, I want to say 12 volts, but it's now gone up to 15. So it's all one power. Yeah, I'm right, that 0 to 12, which is for the controllers, but 15 in the middle. So they used to have it so you could have two power bases in it and obviously um, have individual power for their thing. So if one car flew off, you didn't get a sudden burst of power. So that's all of the bits that you get in your set. So if you end up buying the set and you find that there isn't anything in there that you're missing, then uh, obviously contact the persons that you got it off or Skeletrix themselves and all of that. Uh, just a few more things about the box before we actually go on to it. The actual size of the cars inside there. And there are the track layouts across the top there. So we're going to build one that uh, we've not done before. I think we're going to build that one. So we're just going to build the track and we'll show you what it looks like. Here we have is one of the cars, it's the number 91 GT racing car. Now this kind of reminds me of the Dodge Viper a little bit, and it's very, very similar to the ones in the ARC set. So this would be a very good add-on set towards the ARC set as well, So because there's two other cars that are in that one as well. But the good thing about that is that Skeletrix numbered this one 91, and the one in the ARC sets are 88 and 89. So the cars aren't the same numbers, which they did do previously, if some of you remember the white and blue um, car, the white and purple, sorry, start cars that they released, as well as the blue and green start cars. They were both 21 and 20, whereas the other two were also 20 and 21. And that was a bit of annoying because you had four cars that both, two of which share the same number. But in this case, Skeletrix have done a good thing and they've actually numbered the car completely different. And uh, that's, you know, commendable for them for doing that. Right, so the next car is the LMP start car, the GT prototype as it's called and I'll put the stickers on that one and show you as soon as that one's done. And here's car number two which is the GT prototype. It's quite a nice looking car actually. It's a lot different to any of the other ones where it's got the orange wheels as well and it's got lovely orange stripes all the way down the side and it's quite time consuming unfortunately for the stickers but if you want to do them right it is worth obviously taking your time over them and doing them. But they are pretty nice and they're fully uh, stickered up. And also, if you do end up getting a couple different sets with these cars in, then you can make all kinds of good combinations with these uh, stickers. And also, they're very good for if you do your own spray jobs. Uh, I use them quite a lot on some of the other cars that I've uh, done up with different colour schemes. And they look pretty nice as well. I mean, you've got like you get some really good sponsorship from Skeletrix.com, and you get like Hornby ones and all that kind of stuff, and it's all the like the companies that they own or are partnered with or whatever, and you can have some really nice stickers, and also like the RCT ones, they're pretty cool, the Pilot Seven, and all of that. So you've got some decent amount of like uh, different sponsorship on the cars as well, and it really does make them look like proper uh, race cars and proper sports cars that you'd see out and about in the racing world. Right, so now we're going to get over to the track and do some filming of the cars going around. OK, 
Okay, so this is one of the four layouts that you get in the set. I thought I'd pick this one because it seems to be the sort of largest one. Uh, it kind of makes it look a lot bigger than it actually is on the track. Uh, but over there you've got your lap counter. And this set really for £50 is more of an extension or a starter set. I would highly recommend it if you're about to start into Skeletrics as a set, partly because of all the stuff that you get. But uh, if you've got the Arc 1 set or you're planning on getting that one, I would severely suggest getting, and if you've got the money to get both of these sets, would be to get both of these and then add them to each other because you'd be able to build a nice big track then and also you'd have a good sort of range of pieces uh, to develop into more uh, circuits and as well as the fact that the cars are easy to maintain and are very cheap. The cars themselves are pretty strong and not a lot can break on them and they both, or all the four from the start and this set, run the 18,000 rev motor. Just to uh, show you, they also have the inline motor which powers both wheels directly which is pretty cool. Uh, you, the last car to actually have this was the Dodge Viper and the Mercedes SLR 722, I believe were the last two cars to actually have that on, on them. And the Dodge Viper is obviously, um, in my opinion, is the better out of the two of those cars, but unfortunately they don't make that one anymore. So, we're going to test the number 91 first and see how that goes around the track. And another good thing about this circuit is that it has equal amount of outside to inside, because um, you guys go around, you do sort of change direction. So... It's quite a fair track in that, in my opinion, about how they've done it around. So they're very fast, very responsive, and this is on the um, loosest setting, so you can pull the trigger all the way down. But there's no kick out at all, and the car stays on, and you can go around pretty quickly. I mean, the cars are pretty loud, and the clicking noise is obviously the car as it counts the laps. So you can set up to 50 laps as well and it counts all the way down to 50 for you and then you get to zero eventually. Uh, the only downside to this sort of layout is that you can't see the lap counter from where I'm sitting. So there are other tracks where you've got the lap counter closer to you that you can see, but um, this is probably one of the best layouts just for the fact that it looks big and it's quite a sort of spacious one as well where you've got all the corners being used. So bring around the number 91. Now out of the two, the 91 seems to be the better car, like I've tested these two cars previously in the different formats that they've been in, the different colour schemes, and the GT car seems to be the better out of the two. So we've got this one now, we've um, put it on the inside lane, see how well that one does, and that way if it kicks out it's a bit easier to control. Well this is just as good as the GT one, in fact it handles pretty well. Unfortunately, if you have some of the other prototypes that Skeletrix has done, like the Porsche Arvis Spider and the Peugeot 908, it's not quite on the same level as them, but it is a pretty good little car. Now, it's pretty equal to the 91, so it's quite good that Skeletrix have made it so that the cars match. It always helps when they do a set where both the cars are equal. They have done some sets where the two cars that they put in a set are no way compatible in the sense that they're equal and it can be quite biased. Uh, but these two are very compatible. Uh, if you change the setting on the controller, it makes it a lot easier as well to get that compatibility and to level them, so to speak. But um, at the end of the day, if you're buying this just as a start set, it's mainly gonna be for fun. So it's very good. It's gonna be a lot of fun if you do get it. Very cheap at only £50 at the retail price. Don't pay any more than £50. If you see it, um, I'm going to have to name names, but Toys R Us are selling it for £69.99. That's ridiculous. Absolutely no need to charge £20 extra pound for it. So don't buy it from Toys R Us. If you have got it from Toys R Us, take it back as soon as you can. Get it from somewhere else because you can get it a lot cheaper and it's, you know, you're, you're at £20. You can, get, you can get another one of those start carts for £20 um, from the Skeletric site. So it's definitely worth investing in this set if it's a brand new one for you know starting a hobby or if it's just to add on to your set and also if you've got the arc one or thinking about the arc one i would severely suggest getting these two to sort of combine them together so that's the review 
please give it a like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the other uh, channel, my MC Slot Diecast channel, where we review diecast cars. It's, it's still very small. It needs a bit of growing. It needs a bit more support. So any feedback and help that you can do for that one, that would be great. And any comments about the set that I haven't covered in the video, please leave a comment based on that. And if there's anything you'd like to see, or if there's anything that um, in the video that you'd want to ask me, just feel free to leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit the like button as well.